Hello class, in this video we will be talking about section 8.3, which is combinations, and there are 15 problems in this particular section. Um, and so the big idea, and I kind of mentioned it briefly, maybe not so briefly, um, maybe a little wordy, <laughs> but I did mention it in the last video about the difference between the permutation and the combination. So if you look at your formula sheet, you do have regular permutations where nothing is duplicated, right? You're talking about, you know, seven completely distinct or different items or people or whatever it is you're talking about. Whereas you also have, and the order matters, okay? So like first place, second place, position one, position two, so on and so forth. Then you have duplicated items. So the order still matters here, but you might have um, some duplicated items. I think the biggest example was with the flax, right? You're hanging the flags on the pole. It doesn't matter which red flag you put at the bottom. It's still a red flag at the bottom, right? So that's when, this is the formula to use when you have duplicated items. And your number of duplicates are these. So if I have, you know, five red flags and I would put a five factorial. If I have seven blue flags, I would put a seven factorial and so on and so forth, depending on how many things are repeating. But now what we're gonna talk about is this formula over here, which is the combinations formula. And in the combinations formula, it's a little bit different than this one. It's just like the permutation one, but you're also dividing by R factorial. And why are you dividing by R factorial? Because there's gonna be less combinations. And why is there gonna be less combinations? Because some of those combinations are considered equivalent to the other combinations because the order doesn't matter. So the idea here is, is if you're gonna choose people with all the letters that you have to choose from, if you choose A first, then B second, then C third, but the order doesn't matter, then that's the same thing as saying C, A, B, okay? It's the same combination of the same three letters, okay? Whereas over here, these are not the same. These people in this specific order means A one first place, B one second place, and C one third place. And this one is totally different, okay? So that's why we have that extra factor down there because the order doesn't matter. And so there are gonna be some of those options that are deemed as equivalent as the other options, okay? Um, so here it says, determine whether the following problem involves a permutation, and I just wrote notes to myself, which means it's ordered, or a combination, which means it's not ordered, okay? A medical researcher needs 45 people to test the effectiveness of an experimental drug. If 103 people have volunteered for the test, how many ways can 45 people be selected? Well, in this case, they're all applying for the same exact position, right? They're all applying to be um, a researcher or a volunteer for this research, okay? So in this case, the, the order does not matter. And when the order does not matter, it's going to be a combination, okay? And it literally says the problem involves a combination because the order of the patient selected does not matter, okay? Now, number two says determine whether the following problem involves a permutation or combination. How many different letter passwords can be formed from the letters A, B, C, D, E, F, G if no repetition of letters is allowed? So if no repetition of letters is allowed, then you don't have this situation. You have the old school regular permutation situation, okay? And why is it permutations versus combinations? Because in here, and you're talking about a password, then those letters need to be in those specific spots in order for you to, for the system to accept your password, right? ABD is not the same as DAD, okay? Um, so you have to be very careful here. This one, the order does matter. So it says the problem involves a permutation this time because the order of the letters selected does matter, okay? So that one's different. But that is essentially the main idea in this whole section is that permutations is used when the order matters, combinations are used when the order does not matter, okay? So here it says, use the formula again. So I'm going to use the formula that we had on paper and I wrote it down, okay? 
Um, but I only use the formula on these two particular problems that asked me to use the formula. After that, I use the calculator and I will show you how to use the calculator to get the same answer. So if it says in, and I, I say choose four, so nine choose four, right? In choose R, so P for pick, C for choose, but we know that P is when the order matters and C is when the order does not matter. So I'm gonna evaluate this. So the N is nine. So the nine goes here and here, and the R goes here and here. So nine goes there and there, and R four goes here and here. So if I do this in the parentheses, I end up with nine factorial over five factorial over four factorial. So I wrote out the nine as nine times eight times seven times six times five factorial. That would cancel out this five factorial, but I would still have four factorial at the bottom. Now I just expanded it, but I didn't have to. I could have typed this over four factorial and I still would have gotten the 126. Now you can cut out the whole formula bit if you use a calculator. So if the number nine is in front, I'm gonna type in the number nine first, then I wanna get the C. So you're gonna go to probability and notice that it's option two. So you're gonna hit option two and then type in that second number, which was four. And it does give me the 126. Um, I only did it this long way because it did say, quote unquote, use the formula. You could have just typed this in the calculator and it would have given you 126. Okay, I mean, for that part, you could have even used this and done that in the calculator and it would have given you 126. And doing that, you're still using the formula, okay? So same thing for this one, 20 choose one. So I have 20 factorial over 20 minus one factorial times one factorial, that's this. Um, remember 20 can be written as 20 times 19 factorial, which cancels these. Recall the definition of one factorial, it's just one. Um, and then 20 over one is just 20. So I didn't even really need to type anything in the calculator here when I used the formula. I just used all the definitions of factorials to figure that one out. And I didn't even type that in there, but the answer should be 20. Now, number five says, um, of 18 possible books, you plan to take three with you on vacation. How many different collections of three books can you take? The order doesn't matter here, right? You're just packing the books with you. Who knows when you're gonna read which one when, right? So the order does not matter in this particular part. So you have 18 possibilities and you're gonna choose three, type this in your calculator, practice it now, and see if you get 816. If you do not get 816, you need to figure out how to type this in your calculator so that you do get 816. Um, but definitely, definitely try to practice. Now for number six, it says to win the lotto or to win at lotto in one state, you must correctly select five numbers from a collection of 58 numbers, one through 58. The order in which the selection is made does not matter, right? So they might draw the numbers in the lotto in a certain order, but as long as you have those numbers on your lotto ticket, it doesn't matter what order they are on your lotto ticket, okay? Um, how many different selections are possible? So for this one, you have 58 possibilities. You're gonna choose five of those and the order does not matter. That's why we're saying choose and not pick, okay? Choose for C for combinations because the order does not matter. So if I type 58 C five in my calculator, I do end up with that really big number. What is that? 4,582,116. Now for number seven, it says, in how many ways can you or can a committee of four men and five women be formed from a group of eight men and eight women? Um, it says, okay, so it just wants the committee members. So everybody's holding the same position, which means the order does not matter here. It's not like one guy's, president, one girl's the president, you know, there's no order in, in this at all. It's just a, a group of people, okay? So we do have eight men to choose from and eight women to choose from, but the committee, the committee only wants four men and five women. So what we're going to do is we're going to do eight choose four for the men, 
times eight choose five for the women. And I typed this in the calculator and got 70. And I typed this in the calculator and got 56. And then I multiplied that together and I got this. But I noticed that you could type all of that in the calculator and it doesn't matter which way you type it. I'm gonna show you what I mean. So I can do eight choose four times um, eight choose five. And it gives me that same three nine two zero number. Okay, I can use parentheses, parentheses, eight, choose four, parentheses, eight, choose five, close the parentheses. That's also multiplying them together. And I get this. <coughs> Excuse me. The only one that I wasn't sure about is if you did not type in the dot or use the parentheses to symbolize multiplication. So I tried to do it this way, two, four, and then not put anything in the middle and just do eight, choose five. And it, it gave me an error. It was just completely confused, okay? Because it looks like it's saying eight, choose 48, choose five. It's just, it doesn't work when you don't put in that times. So in the calc, you either have to enter this or you have to enter with the little time symbol. Okay. And if you enter it in either one of those ways, I honestly prefer um, I honestly prefer the second way. But if you enter it either one of these ways, it should still give you this value. I mean, you saw me, you witnessed me do it. But this one I prefer. Notice that that's how I wrote it down. So this is the one I usually use to type it in. Okay, moving on to number eight. So number eight says, in a race in which six automobiles are entered and there are no ties, how many ways can the first three finishers come in? Okay, so this is the exact same question that we had in the previous section. And they're just putting it in here to remind you that if you're talking about something that has order and the order matters, you're not using combinations, you're using permutations. So here, since the order matters, I'm not doing six choose three, I'm doing six pick three, okay? And so, and I know those words sound the same, choose, pick, what's the difference, right? But I know that I'm saying choose versus pick because I'm saying combinations versus permutations. And combinations is when the order doesn't matter, permutations is when the, com when the order does matter, okay? So I'm going to do CP3, type that in your calculator, you get 120. For number nine, it says, in how many ways can a person order one ice cream cone with three different flavors of ice cream? If there are eight flavors to choose from, and it matters to the person how the three flavors are stacked on one cone. What that is, which flavor is on the top, middle, and bottom? So here they specifically are telling you that the order matters, right? So you're doing P again. So eight P three. And if I type that in the calculator, it does spit out three, three, six. So now what we're gonna do here is for number 10, it says a person has four dress shirts, five ties and three jackets. How many ways can that person select a dress shirt, a tie and a jacket for work today? I mean, they didn't say any of these things were going to match, but <laughs> I guess you could wear it even if it don't match. Um, so the old method is um, we would take four dress, four dress shirts times five ties times three jackets, and that would give me 60 weights. The new method is to do the combinations because the order does not matter. They didn't say you had to pick the, the shirt before you pick the tie before you pick the jacket, right? They just said you got to pick one from each and that's it. Put them on. I mean, I'm sure there's an order in which you're going to put them on, but there's no order in which you need to choose them. Okay. So in this case, it, I have four options for the shirt, but I'm going to choose one and the order does not matter. Okay. Here I have five options for ties. I'm going to choose one. Here I have three options for jackets and I'm going to choose one. If I type all of this in my calculator, and whether I use the little multiplication in the, in the middles or if I use parentheses around each one, 
I will get the value 60, okay? Now, number 11 says, how many different committees can be formed from 12 teachers and 34 students if the committee consists of three teachers and two students? So they're just committee members. In this case, the order does not matter. They're not specific kinds of committee members. They're just all equivalent committee members, okay? So then in this case, you have for the teachers, you have 12 choose three teachers. And for the students, you have 34 choose two students. So you type that all on your calculator. It does give you this number, uh, 123,420. For number 12, it says a group of campers is going to occupy three campsites at a campground. There are 16 campsites to choose from or from which to choose. <laughs> In how many ways can the campsites be chosen? And I didn't write this on here, but it says you've got 16 to choose from. It doesn't matter which order. I mean, a campsite is a campsite, right? So you do six, choose three. It didn't say that these this particular group needed to be on this one or that particular group needed to be on that one. There's nothing. So 16 probability choose three. We end up with 560. And that is the answer there. Then for number 13, it says a comedian knows seven jokes. Okay, great. One joke is old, one joke is new, and the other jokes are somewhere in between. If the order in which these jokes are told makes a difference in terms of how they are received, how many ways can they be delivered if the joke is told first and the new joke is told last? Now this one, I don't even know if that's correct because I don't have no work here for some reason. Okay, so you've got seven jokes and you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now they're telling me that the first joke has to be the old one and the new joke is going to be the last one. So I only have one option for the first and last jokes. So there's seven total, which gives me five options for this one, six up, I'm sorry, I'm supposed to go down, not up. <laughs> so now that five is gone, two of them are gone, another one's gone, I only have four left. And now another one's gone, I only have three left. Another one's gone, I only have two left, which leaves me one more joke to put there in that spot, okay? And if you multiply all of this out, you get uh, five times four times three times two times one, you do get 120. So this was correct, okay? But that one was a little bit uh, more complicated, okay? So you basically, you already knew what you were gonna choose for the first spot. For the next one, two, three, four, five spots, you had five to choose from, so five, choose five, um, and the order did matter. So you might wanna be doing P. And then the last spot was a one. You didn't have really a choice on that one. So one times five, P five times one is 120. So I get the same thing. Notice I use the dots. So one times five, P five times one, and it is the same 120. So whether you did it the old method or you did it the new method, you still get the same uh, value. So last two problems, here we go. It says a four by 51 lottery involves choosing four of the numbers from one through 51 and a 327 lottery involves choosing three of the numbers one through 27. The order in which the numbers are chosen does not matter. So if that's the case, then we're gonna be using combinations, okay? Now, which lottery is easier to win? Explain. So we have 51 choose four versus 27 choose three. So for the 51 choose four, I got this value in the calculator. And for 27 choose three, I got this value in the calculator. Now, more possibilities means the lesser chance at winning because now you have a one in this many chance, okay? So the easier lottery is going to be the lottery with fewer possibilities. This is the option with fewer possibilities. 
So that means that the 327 lottery is going to be the easiest one to win. Um, and when you click on the options, you're gonna click the 327 lottery because that one's easier. And it says it's easier to win because there are only how many possibilities? We already figured that out. Compared to the other number of possibilities for the 451 lottery. So you will need those values. You won't be able to just say, oh, there's less here. So I'm gonna just go with that one. That one's easier, okay? You do have to figure out what those actual numbers are. So finally, our last question in this section, it says an electronic store receives a shipment of 40 graphing calculators, including eight that are defective. Four of the calculators are selected to be sent to a high school, a local high school. How many of these selections will contain no defective calculators, okay? Now, the order doesn't matter whether the order is, you know, the first graphing calculator or the last graphing calculator in this shipment does not matter, okay? So that means we are gonna be doing combinations. Um, now, here though, I wrote that the number of non-defective calcs, since eight of them are defective, then the number of non-defectives are gonna be 40 minus eight, which is 32. And then I have to select four from these non-defective calculators because it says how many of these will contain no defective calculators. So I'm doing 32 choose four. So 32 non-defective calculators and I'm picking four from those non-defective calculators. So when you type this in your calculator, you do end up with this value 35,960. So that one was a little bit tricky. Um, we are gonna go to the next section and this section is going to be super critical. They tried to, um, they tried to get us to uh, establish the difference between permutations and combinations in this section. And in the next section, we're gonna be doing some more stuff with this scenario. Because notice how we talked about more possibilities means a lesser chance, quote unquote, a chance. When you talk about your chance, um, you're talking about probability. And so in the next section, we're going to be using all of these permutations and combination stuff, these possibilities to figure out what your chances are, okay? What's the probability that this will happen versus that happening and so on and so forth, okay? So we will be addressing that in the next video. So I will see you guys in the next one.